Welcome to Dreams Inspire Reality Podcast with Tara Darnley, a podcast for creatives looking to turn their dreams into reality with practical strategic steps from everyday people and entrepreneurs who are living their best lives possible. Hello, hello, hello. Today we have another amazing episode for you guys, and I'm so excited about today's guest. Terry Foster is the founder of Terry Foster Consultant Services, which specializes in Facebook advertising. Terry has managed over $5 million for ad spend for his clients, resulting in over $15 million of online sales, as well as several hundred thousand leads for his clients. Terry is most passionate about working with Black-owned businesses that are promoting products and services to provide values and uplift the Black community. Hi, Terry. How are you? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great as well. So, Terry, I'm going to jump right into it. All right. Talk all things Facebook, because Facebook, <laughs> I think, is a love-hate relationship with so many of us small businesses. So, let's talk about um, the pros and the cons. Um, Facebook recently changed the algorithm, right? And they're basically telling us that we want to show your friends and your family. We don't really care about showing these ads so much. And we just want natural content. How is that affecting small businesses? Should we be worried? Should we still be running Facebook ads? Uh, That's a good question. And a lot of people are wondering that. But I think that the caveat here is that Facebook, you know, they can say that they want more organic stuff on your feed, but they're always going to be ads because ad is where they ads are where they make their revenue at. So mostly what they're trying to negate is uh, the big brands who have like a lot of people on their fan page that are pushing stuff out. It's not really valuable content. So as a small business owner, you still want to leverage Facebook ads and it's still going to be an important part of your strategy, but you're definitely going to have to pay to play, unfortunately. So money always, uh, money always follow follow the money. So you do have to be willing to invest if you want people to see your content. So just having people that have liked your page is not enough anymore because if, as a business, if you're putting stuff out, that stuff isn't going to take precedence over the friends and family of the people's uh, newsfeed. But if you pay to get that stuff seen, it's still going to get, get, get served because it's all about the money. I like that that you said you have to play to pay. <laughs> and so, well, sorry, pay to play. And some of us, we, I know for me, I do not like getting that Facebook bill, so I don't <laughs> like playing to pay, but sometimes it's worth it. Um, what are some of the number one mistakes the, your clients make or just people in general when they're running ads? I think uh, probably the biggest mistake is not knowing exactly why you're running ads. So before you start spending money and before you start paying the play, you need to get real clear on what your actual objective is. What are you trying to do? And ultimately, if you're paying, you want to have a path back to making money. So it's important that you understand how your funnel is set up or if you have a product that you're selling, you need to make sure that you have the strategy on how you can do that successfully with Facebook ads. For example, like for products, If you are selling something for $10 and it costs you $7 to make it, uh, Facebook ads is likely not going to be a good fit for you, and you should know that before you start running running ads. So that's a really big mistake is just not coming up with a strategy, not knowing your numbers. Like the example that I just gave, you want to make sure before you start spending, you have a path to make your money back. So knowing your numbers is paramount knowing how much you can afford to pay on your ads and what type of return on ad spend you need in order to be profitable. So not enough people actually know their numbers. And then also just making sure that you have an offer that's strong enough to go on Facebook because there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people in the auction buying for that real estate on the news feed. So when you're coming into that game, you want to make sure that you are real clear about your offer, who needs that offer, and how it benefits them, uh, because that's really what it boils down to. 
I love that you mentioned that we need to know our cost of goods before we even start running ads because um, that's such a great point. Most people are selling maybe a $5 product. So running an ad to start off, it might not be, you know, sufficient for you to like, you know, turn a profit on a $5 product. If they're just going to check out with that. Um, right. Let's talk about having a good Facebook copy. Um, I know a lot of things going to play to get that conversion once you know someone sees your Facebook ad. So let's talk about having a good Facebook copy, the landing page, and something I see a lot of people miss and that I have missed in the past is having a good call to action. Um, can you share some mistakes you've seen on this and how we can avoid those mistakes? Definitely. Yeah. So call to action is important. You always want to have a call to action. Uh, but more importantly, you want to be authentic and genuine with your messaging. So in Facebook, I like to say the less your ad looks like an ad, the more successful it's going to be. So that means that it's okay to use slang on your ad copy. It's okay to use emojis. It's okay to use inside jokes. You want to actually act like the person who's reading it is your friend. Um, you know, you should know a lot about them because they're your avatar. You should know kind of like what piques their interest and you should play off of that. If it just comes like straight buy my product or sign up for my service, uh, they're going to overlook that because there's going to be other things that are more valuable that it can do with their time and that's not going to catch their attention. So always just strive to make your ad copy different and make it stand out like a, Number one, test something you can always do and something that I always do when I write ad copy is I read it and I ask myself, okay, how likely would I be to like, comment, or share this ad? Because the name of the game is all about engagement. If you have an ad that gets a lot of engagement, that means Facebook is going to favor it. You're going to pay less to get that ad shown and your results are going to be better. So have fun with your ad copy. Don't be afraid to push the envelope a little bit and kind of think outside of the box to connect with your, to connect with your audience. And a lot of people don't do that. That's very true. I've been guilty of this, so I can definitely relate. <laughs> um, running Facebook ads, you have to, even for beginners, you have to know a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of acronyms in Facebook ads. So for example, PPC, CPA, um, if someone is just starting out, you know, most of the time we don't know what those things are. Um, let's talk about ROAS, return on your ad spend. It's one of the most important metrics when running an ad. Can you share with us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Return on ad spend is definitely the most important metric that you want to focus on. And basically return on ad spend just lets you know that for every X amount of dollars you put in, you're going to get X amount of dollars back. So in, in order to calculate that, let's just say that you're running ads and it produced $1,000 in sales for you and you spent $100 on the ad spend, then your return on ad spend is 1,000%. You just take the uh, 1,000 divided by 100 in terms of percentage. So like if you spent $500 on the ads, and you've got a thousand dollars in sales. You take the thousand dollars minus the five hundred, so it would be a two hundred percent return on ad spend. So that just lets you know. Um, that lets you just know how much money you're getting out of the ads, and of course, the amount of return on ad spend that you need to be successful depends on things such as like how much it costs you to feel, fulfill the product or service how much your overhead is in your business, how much shipping costs are, and things such as that. So you kind of roll those numbers up, and then you're able to calculate the exact amounts you need to get in terms of return on ad spend in order to be profitable. So, <clears throat> so like uh, putting some numbers behind that, if you, let's assume that you're selling a product that costs you $100 well, let's, you sell on a product, $100 is the average order value. So every time you sell a product, let's just assume you get $100. If it costs you $50 to kind of fulfill that order completely, that means that you can pay $50 to acquire a customer. So your cost per acquisition is an important number that you can calculate. But then once you have that number, you can take that $100 that you're going to get for that order, divide it by the average 
acquisition cost you can pay to acquire a customer, which is 50, and even know that the return on ad spend needed for that campaign to break even would be 200% because it's the $100 minus by the $50 that you can pay to acquire a customer. And as that number moves up and down, your return on ad spend need it will move up and down because if you need it to instead pay $75 to fulfill that same order that you get a hundred for, that would mean that you could only pay $25 to acquire a customer. So then you would need a 400% return on ad spend to break even because you would take a hundred divided by that new value of $25 and that would leave you with a return on ad spend of 400% to break even. So in those situations, you can see that you would be in a lot situation if you want to run Facebook ads, if you would, if you only needed to get that 200% return on ad spend as opposed to the 400%. So you kind of just always want to play with those numbers to see how much you can actually afford to pay. Um, honestly, I hate Matt. And you just gave me, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just was like, um, no, you're good. <laughs> that was a good breakdown, but I'm definitely going to have to listen to the, my own podcast again, just to like, you know, break that down. How you broke it down was perfect. And I would have to look at that. Yeah. But that just goes to show you that it's not just like clicking on a button and say, hey, run an ad, right? It takes right. more metrics that goes behind the scenes. So when should, an, when should we hire an expert like yourself and what should we look for? Because what you just said, I was just like, um, no, Terry, um, <laughs> take it. <laughs> just, just run my ad. So yeah. when should we hire an expert like yourself? Uh, well, really, I, I kind of recommend that everyone, like, typically, I know as business owners, we're all busy and we have, like, a lot of different priorities. So you don't want to, if you don't have the time, then you probably shouldn't look to become an expert yourself. But I do recommend that as a business owner, you should at least become familiar with what Facebook ads are about. So at least you can kind of talk the same language somewhat, even at, if it's just at a high level. So I encourage everyone to at least dive in to kind of get the basics on their own. When you're ready to kind of outsource it and have someone else run the ads for you is when really you have the budget to be able to do so and you have the numbers in place for it to, to make sense. So if you're only can afford at the moment to you know spend like five or ten dollars a day on your Facebook ads, then you probably don't need someone else to do that. It's probably just more beneficial for you to go in there, play around, test, take some time, and then figure it out. <clears throat> and then once you find a few things that work and you start generating a little bit more money, then maybe you come to someone like me who can manage it full time for you. So really, the biggest. Uh, determination on when you're ready to make that move is when you're able to have the budget to be able to do so. And when you do have the budget, it's a smart investment because, um, you know, working with the experts, your results are going to be better. And plus it frees you up for other aspects of your business. And it allows you to put your time and energy into other areas of the business that you're going to have a bigger impact on as opposed to playing around and trying to figure out Facebook. So if you have the money to be able to bring on someone, that's probably going to be your best bet and going to lead to, you know, more success that route. I love that you, you mentioned that. And I, I totally agree with any aspect of your business. You should know how to do it before you outsource it. That way, when, if you hire someone like Terry to run your Facebook ads, you know, okay, he's doing a great job because I've done it before and, you know, maybe I didn't see the conversion like this or uh, maybe he's not doing a good job or maybe it's not the time, like you mentioned earlier, maybe my products are not, you know, it's just not ready to run ads maybe because yeah. of pricing or whatever it is. Um, so that's a great, um, that's a great comment. Um, Let's talk about boosting Facebook ads because Facebook can be rather annoying and <laughs> they always like insist on you boosting your posts, right? So is that a good option for us? Should we be putting, even if it's like a $5 investment to boost a post that they're showing us could, you know, have a great return based on us just posting it to our regular Facebook page? Yeah, I think boosting has a time in place. So if you look just like really strapped for time and you really don't know the ins and out of Facebook ads, 
And if you boost a post for like five or ten dollars, then it's a good way to experiment with how increased traffic and how paid traffic can work for you. So it, it definitely can work if you have something that has done organically, then it's a good idea to throw a couple dollars on it as a boost just to see if that momentum carries and it leads to purchases or leads or whatever that that boost is about. Really like the only difference between boosting and running ads in the back end is that if you run them on a back end, you just have um, more power and control over the targeting. You can reach deeper, deeper interest and in things such as that. But if you just want to get the word out to more people and you want to do it quick, you know, everyone pretty much knows how to boost a post. So that's kind of what it's there for. It's the easy, it's the easy button. So you know, if the choice is between boosting a post for $5 or not, um, and you have the $5 to spend, I would boost it, but you're not going to create a, you know, scalable, successful um, account by just boosting posts. Um, there's a transition that needs to eventually happen. That definitely makes sense. Um, one of my favorite things about Facebook, and probably my only favorite thing, <laughs> is, <laughs> is the retargeting ads because I just love my customers' reaction when they think that I just you know know what they want. So <laughs> I would just set up a retargeting ad, and they like uh, most of my customers are parents, and so they'll see it and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I was just thinking about that. How did they know?" And it, like the comments are just always epically funny. So I just absolutely love retargeting ads. And it's one of the most affordable ways you can reach your customers. Can you tell us some of the benefits of retarget, using retargeted ads on Facebook? Yeah, I mean, you kind of summed it up. But really, it's just about staying the top of mind. A lot of people need multiple touches before they make a decision. So that's one of, if you're just starting out with Facebook ads, that's kind of like, and you already have like traffic to your site. That's like the first thing that you need to do. And you'll probably get a return. Your investment is just set up retargeting campaigns. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you have a Facebook ad account and that you grab your pixel and you place your pixel on any uh, URL that traffic can, can hit on your site. So what Facebook does with that pixel is you're building up an audience that says, okay, in the last week you had, 100 people visit the site, and then you can create retargeting ads that go back to those 100 people with ads trying to get them to actually buy or become a lead or what have you. So retargeting campaigns are typically going to be your most profitable campaign, and it makes sense just because the more times someone sees an offer, uh, typically the better. Also, a reason that retargeting campaigns do well, at least from what I see, is that we try to sweeten the offer a bit. So maybe, you know, the first time they see it, you know, we want them to pay full price, but maybe we want, we want to do a retargeting campaign targeting people that have initiated the checkout but didn't buy. So they're really close to being able to um, kind of cross that line and become a customer. So we may offer them free shipping or we may offer them 10% or something like that. So that second time the offer is sweeter than the first time that they've seen it. And I'm not sure if it's a good or bad thing, but kind of like, especially with Facebook ads, nowadays people are expecting that because they know how as marketers work. So even myself, like if I see a Facebook ad on something I want, uh, I would never just go and buy it the first time. I would go, add to the cart, initiate the checkout, and then abandon it because I know a day later in my feed, I'm going to see a retargeting ad and I'm going to be able to save money. So people now are kind of being, I know what you guys do. <laughs> customers right. Do. Yeah. So, so yeah, people are kind of getting trained to that as well. But in the grand scheme of things, that's why it's also important knowing, knowing your numbers because you want to be able to offer free ship and you want to be able to offer a 10 or 15% discount and still make money because in the grand scheme of things, um, your conversion rate is going to go up. So you're, you're going to make more money on the bottom line as long as the numbers kind of fit into to what you have going on. If you're running ads and you just literally can't afford to give someone a 10% discount to get them to buy, then you probably shouldn't be running Facebook ads because your margins aren't, aren't good enough and you need to have a return for it to make sense. 
I love that. And I think um, this will now lead into my question of automation, right? Because I know I run my retargeting ads automated. So it's not something I constantly go in and do. It's just set. And I know if you visit my site, you're going to be retargeted. Um, so what are some of the automation tools or things that we should have implemented while running a Facebook ad to make sure we capture that customer? Because as you mentioned before, someone might not buy just like, you know, impulsively by coming to your website and like, oh my God, I love it so much. Click check out. Maybe it could be over two days, three days. I've heard people say over a month, you know, so what are some of the automation tools and processes that we should have while running a Facebook ad? Yeah, good question. That's a great question, actually. So you definitely, again, it's about hitting people uh, multiple times in different channels. So in addition to having all this set up, stuff set up in Facebook ads by making sure that your pixels are set up correctly so you can follow them in that manner, you also want to make sure that you're leveraging uh, strategies such as email follow-ups. So if someone adds to your cart, adds to your cart but doesn't buy, they should have an email sequence follow-up that since those people are emailed, it tries to get them to buy as well. Uh, now Facebook Messenger is another channel that can be effective. So now you can actually, if someone adds to the cart and doesn't buy, now you can actually send someone a message directly in Facebook Messenger um, with a abandoned cart follow-up sequence. So those are really the three biggest channels is you want to continue to hit people on Facebook. Just make sure that your pixel is installed properly. A very powerful form of retargeting on Facebook is called dynamic product ads. And basically what that does is if you have a site with multiple products, uh, you can run ads to the exact product that someone viewed because you don't know like um, exactly what, product someone bought if they just go to your store you know generally so you may just not know like which product someone may be interested in so you just may send them to your general store and then once they poke around they may say oh these are the three products that i like so those are the three products that they view so the next time they see your ads you don't want to send them back to just a general store again you want to send them back to those three products that they they were interested in and that's what the dpa campaigns do and can be utilized for and typically the return on ad spend on those campaigns are, are pretty good and to be your highest performing campaign and let's talk about uh running an ad in, in terms of the copy i know for me videos always convert well because People love cute babies, right? So yeah. <laughs> what are um, some of the convergent on um, video, well, between video or photo, what has converted the most for some of your clients? And why do you think that was? Yeah, I mean, all things being equal, I would lean towards video. Like our best ads and our most successful ads have been tied to video. That doesn't mean that we haven't had success with images as well, but just videos do a better job at connecting and resonating with people like um you can just be more straightforward with your ad copy because as you know like some things if you just say it in your ad copy it may get disapproved so if it's, it's like a really big pain point that you want to hit or something like that just putting in an ad copy can put you at risk of getting your ad disapproved but in video um it's a lot more lenient so you can just be a lot more direct with hitting the pain points um it's just really more more engaging, and um, I think that really makes the difference. So all things being equal, we like to definitely try to leverage videos into our strategy, but we still utilize images as well, like DPA campaigns, for example. Those can't be video ads. Those are just carousel image ads, and like I said, typically those are the highest uh, converting campaigns. So images still work. We like to use image images and retargeting campaigns. So like, let's say we are offering free shipping or 20% off in a retargeting campaign. Uh, a lot of time images may work better just because in that image, you can really hone in on the fact that someone's saving 20% or someone's getting free shipping. So they're just looking at the image. It pops out real quick that they're getting a deal. So the click through rate may be higher on an image than if you had a video saying the same thing, just because uh, really, you're just building that ad around the offer and the image is just more simpler to and quicker to digest. So 
you, you want to have both of them in your strategy, but if you really want your ads to be scalable, you want to try to find a way to incorporate a video. I love it. And um, in terms of videos, I know Facebook, um, we're running ads. They're very strict on how we run ads. We cannot use profanity. We cannot use certain words. We cannot use copyright music. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, you, I know you just touched on, um, so I guess you answered some of my question, like, you know, how to prevent these things. You touched on, you know, the content of the video. How long should a video be? Uh, that's a question that I get all the time and really there's no exact answer, but what I like to typically suggest for my clients is that if you want a video to run on both Facebook and Instagram, it has to be under 60 seconds because anything longer than 60 seconds won't run on Instagram. So if possible, I like to have a variation of a video that's under 60 seconds just so we can hit both of those platforms. But then I've had success with videos longer than a minute as long as the videos are engaging and, you know, keeps the audience's attention. So you don't want to strive for, unless it's the minute mark, but like, you know, I, I wouldn't say like 90 seconds, for example, because you don't want to strive for just like a, a benchmark time because that extra 15 seconds could make the difference of, of converting a sale or converting the lead if that 15 seconds was really valuable. But you never want a video to be as long as it needs to be, <laughs> if that makes sense. Definitely makes sense. And a, and a number, um, besides that question, another question that I often see is people are struggling with finding their audience and knowing who their audience is which I think you should know that, you know, going into any business, first of all. Right. So when running ads, how are people, what are your suggestions for targeting audience? Like, what are we, should we look, be looking for? I know some people say you need to know what they drink. <laughs> if they're yeah. going to Starbucks, are they shopping? What is their income like? Where do they work? So like, what are some of the key things that you think is a must that we should know about the audience we're trying to reach? Yeah, well, I'm a big proponent in is knowing as much as possible when you're doing your homework and you're trying to define your avatar. You should really have a good pulse on who your actual audience is. So, like a lot of those questions you asked, you know, I kind of want to know. That doesn't mean we're going to target if our audience drinks Starbucks. We may not just target people to like Starbucks because that's going to be a huge, <coughs> excuse me, a huge audience. So maybe too broad, but like the most important things is obviously you want to know like what country you're, you're going after because if, you know, if most of your buyers are in the United States, then you shouldn't be targeting China because you're going to end up wasting a lot of money doing that. So that's kind of uh, definitely a captain obvious kind of a point right there in terms of knowing the location uh the age range is something you should know because some products or services you know like they just may have the age range that you can target and if it's outside of that then you shouldn't waste money hitting those people with facebook ads but really the biggest thing is interest so like what type of books they like to read what type of tv shows what type of magazines what type of hobbies do they have, what types of groups may they be in, you know, things such as that, because those are going to be like when you're targeting, your interests are going to be your largest segment of people. So I just want a good sense of uh, things that they're interested in. And also the demographic and the behavioral data helps. So like if, you know, if you're um, selling something that only married people would be interested in, then you need to make sure that you go in and you layer your ads to only target people that are married because that's targetable in Facebook. So I like to say the more you know, the better. And then you, after you find out all that stuff, you kind of just see what makes sense in Facebook and what you can actually, what you can actually target because you're not going to be able to target all the stuff that you come up with anyways, most likely. That is so true because I see ads all the time on my feed and I'm like, I am not interested in your product or service. Right. I'm not your customer. How did you find me? Yeah. <laughs> like you said, yes. you definitely would be wasting money um, if that's what the number of the mistakes you're making. Um, right. Let's talk about how should we rate 
what's a good PPC um, rate for an ad click? Like what's a good, cause I know realistically I would probably want mine to be like one cent, but <laughs> that's not realistic. So like what, yeah. what, what are things that should be considered? Yeah. And it's going to vary from niche to niche and in industry to industry because cost per click. One of the things that go into making, make up that number is your CPM, which is the cost it takes to get your ad served a thousand times. And that number is impacted by how many people are trying to target your audience. So there's some niches that are just way more expensive than others. So that definitely helps play a factor on what you should be willing to pay for a click. Typically for most of like my e-com clients, uh, you definitely should be under a dollar per click. Like if you're paying over a dollar per click, it's probably not going to work unless you're selling a product that's pretty expensive. But ideally, like our best campaigns for e-com, you know, we're always under 50 cents a click. So that's kind of what we strive for in e-com campaigns is to be under 50 cents a click. For the lead gen campaigns, it, it varies a lot because we have some clients in some niches that aren't as saturated where we're paying like 20 cents a click. And then we have some where we're paying like $5 a click just because it's a premium niche and it's expensive. Uh, because Facebook is an auction. So if you're targeting people that um, are more affluent or that a lot of people are trying to reach as well, a lot of big spenders are hitting that audience, then you have to pay more to reach those people because it's it's an auction. So there's more, there's some people on Facebook more valuable than others. And if you want to reach those people, you have to pay more to reach them. It's just a way that it's set up. That's very true. And I know you know you work with clients that are making millions in ads. So what are some of the most successful strategies that you can share with us? It's probably yeah, really, yeah. yeah, so it always, the successful campaign always boils down to really just four things. Uh, pretty much every time is having a really strong offer. It comes down to having strong creatives and messaging. It comes down to being able to know your audience. And it comes down to, um, well, it, messaging and creatives are, sep sep are two separate things. So the offer, your messaging, your creatives, and your targeting. So once you have those four things dialed in, that's going to, give you a really really good chance at success because if you're strong on those four areas then you pretty much have the the game figured out because it's always about getting the right message in front of the right person at the right time so if you do your homework and strengthen those four things then you're going to have success with your facebook ad campaigns that is so true. This has been quite valuable and tons of information. I hope you guys are able to take some of Terry's advice and implement them. Um, Terry, I totally forgot to ask you my popular question for my guests. <laughs> are you living your dream life right now? Yes, I definitely am. I have been uh, in a Facebook ad space for just a little over three years now, but it just seems like yesterday I was just getting started. I got started doing this as kind of like a side hustle. I still had the nine to five job and, you know, I was just picking up clients on the side, but I was able a year later to transition into doing this full time. And since then, it's just been quite, quite a ride. I've been fortunate to hook up with some really good clients, meet some good connections and just kind of be rewarded for going about business the right way. Uh, since the last two years, I've been able to grow out uh, a team. Like now I have two full-time employees. I have four account managers, two VAs. So that's awesome. And, you know, just really excited about the future and building something even bigger and better. So I'm definitely living out my dream right now. I was miserable when I was doing a nine to five thing. I always wanted to build something, you know, on my own and, um, just really have more more of an impact 
in, in, in life. And I didn't feel like I was doing that before, but I feel like I'm definitely doing that now about a way that we're kind of changing businesses and how we're helping other entrepreneurs live their dreams. So it's really, really, really cool. I love that. And I love that the whole process of, you know, something you were doing on the side and then the transition. That's amazing. Definitely inspiring. And I found Terry, I found out about Terry in a group, a Facebook group. And, you know, you've just been on the radar. Everybody's talking yeah. about Terry, changing lives out here. So you're definitely, I think, living your purpose and walking in your purpose. And I'm going to go with some fun questions because. You know, it's been right. it's been very <laughs> here. I yes. think not, we gave Facebook a lot of ads in this. this. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go with some fun question. Who's your favorite entrepreneur? Oh, that's a good question. Favorite entrepreneur. Um, man, there's so. And it could be, so, it could be so, yeah. a regular person. Like, it don't have to be, like, someone we all know. It could be someone that's, like, regular that inspires you. Because those are the yeah, best. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about best, but maybe, like, most recent after having a discussion, it's just, like, people like um, Jay-Z and P. Diddy, just for the fact of they're about to be billionaires pretty soon. And, you know, they came from being rappers, but they – became entrepreneurs to kind of grow that to almost a billion dollars, which is unheard of because right now, currently there's only like one African American man on the Forbes billionaires list. And now rappers are about to, to, to join them. So that's just kind of mind boggling with how they were able to use the platform as rappers, but become entrepreneurs and build up these empires and against all of the odds. So that's pretty cool. You're actually my second guest who gave the same exact answer. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I think that was a, the first mail. So I guess. It's a mail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the last book you read? <laughs> uh, perf- High Performance Habits by Brenda Bruchard. Favorite business tool? Oh, favorite business tool? Uh, Facebook. <laughs> Power editor, yeah, that's where we make our money. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, in in one sentence, give me uh, the worst ad copy you've ever seen, if you could remember. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> there's been some bad ones. Nothing's uh, coming to mind right now, but um, pretty much the ones, and I still can't believe people do this, where they just put like "buy now" and they just give the link. <laughs> like, so this is how hey, I have by now. Don't just point judge us. Don't judge us. I think <laughs> we yeah, learn. Yes. We learn. What is what? What is your latest business win? Uh, the latest business win would be bringing on another full time employee who is an added account ad account manager. So he's been with us for about two weeks. And that's just a really big deal in the business just because it allows someone else to kind of also be um, uh, responsible and on the same page to get these ad accounts performing better. Because when you're working with freelancers, um, there's kind of a limit on on what you can ask and what you can expect of them. Um, And then they're kind of like all over the place. They're in other places of the States and I have one in the UK. So there's definitely a big benefit of working with someone in your office. Um, So that was a pretty, really big win for us. And with wins comes failure and we love learning from our failures. (laughs) What was the last business failure you had and the lesson you learned? Ah, well, we had a pretty big one today. I don't know if it's a, I guess you can look at it as a failure, but when you're running Facebook ads, there's always the possibility that your ad account gets disabled, which is bad, bad news. And actually our biggest client had their account disabled. We set up another account with like new payment and try to do it again. It ran for like three days. We were getting amazing results, actually better than we were before. 
Then I come in today and I got the email from Facebook that the second account was disabled as well. So that uh, it's not a good start to the day, but typically it's tough because once your account gets disabled, like they just flag everything and they make it tough for you to get back, See, get back now, up again. That is a really good one. And I cannot end the podcast without you telling us. <laughs> Top two things that could have that happen to us. Like, what are the top two things that could have your account shut down? Uh, it seems like you got to be careful with making claims, even if it's true. Like, the product that we sold, like, you know, we sold over a million dollars worth of the product. We had thousands upon thousands of positive reviews with people saying that it worked. So we believed that it worked and we weren't making a claim but if you say something like you know where we grow your edges it could still be looked at as a claim by Facebook because for some people it may not some people it doesn't work you know things like that it's never 100% there always would be some people that may respond differently but we know for the most part that it does work but that's still something that you're kind of um, under Facebook's uh, power on and sometimes they can be mean so that's a big one um also nothing nothing like spammy no like mlm stuff um no stuff about getting rich quick or anything like that that's like an instant <laughs> instant shutdown for facebook so they, they don't like that for sure so guys <laughs> make sure you are not making false claims out there <laughs> And mm -hmm. Harry, this was um, one of my favorite um, episode records. So thank you, thank you for coming on. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. I still won't be doing Facebook ads myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if you guys are like me and you want to hire someone like Terry, how can we reach you? Yeah, you can check out my site. It's www.terryfosterconsulting.com. So that's my website. You can go there and check out some uh, case study videos, some testimonials, have my packages listed there. So that's a way that you can get in touch with me. If you are kind of just looking for a foundation and want to become more familiar with Facebook ads, I also have a membership site called www.fbadsplaybook.net. So www.fbadsplaybook.net. And that was my attempt to just kind of package the learnings of, you know, spending all this money and working with all these accounts to put together training videos and all the videos are less than 10 minutes long. So it allows you to go in there and they just answer the questions that are costing people money with Facebook ads. So a lot of times people are intimidated about learning Facebook ads because they scared it's going to take too much time or too much money so I just wanted to simplify the process and really just provide lots of videos where I actually record my screen so it's really easy to follow I talk through it and answer questions about Facebook um, also uh, monthly Facebook live Q&A session with me so the people that are in there they come on the Facebook Live and I'll answer any questions they have. And there's also a private Facebook group that comes along with that as well. So that's something else that you can join. And um, for the people listening, we will have a discount code that will allow you to get a yearly, a yearly membership, which is typically $300. But if you're listening to this, you can get it for $100 if you use the code DREAMS. So it's 12 month access for $100, which is a really, really good deal. That is amazing. I didn't know Terry was going to do that. So thank you <laughs> so much. I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of that myself. And I'll also have it in the link, guys, on our website and under the podcast episode. Um, so the code is DREAMS. And that's a fantastic offer. Thank you so much, Terry, for coming on. Guys, stay tuned for thank another you. awesome episode next week. Appreciate it. Dreams inspire reality. Turn your dreams into reality. Dreams inspire reality. Hey guys, let's
give a quick thanks to our sponsor, Terry Foster Consultant. Are you tired of wasting money on Facebook ad spends with no return on investment? Is your business ready for more leads and sales? Terry has a special discount for my listeners today. You can purchase Terry's Facebook ad playbook, which is a combination of Facebook courses, plus access to his private Facebook group and monthly training for only $100 for a yearly membership. Guys, that is a $200 savings with code DREAMS, D-R-E-A-M-S, DREAMS. To sign up, visit fbadsplaybook.net, fbadsplaybook.net, or terryfosterconsulting.com.